The views expressed on the following program do not necessarily reflect the views of Money Radio staff, management, or advertisers, and do not represent an offer to buy or sell any securities. Some interviews heard on this program may be sponsored by the participants. It's time for Health Futures with Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. This is Arizona's only show dedicated to providing you with expert advice on how to live a longer, healthier, and happier life. To learn more, call 602-264-8009. That's 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host. Bob Roth. Good afternoon. My name is Bob Roth, and you're listening to Health Futures, taking stock in you. We're a weekly show found right here on Money Radio, 1510 AM, 99.3 FM, and on the World Wide Web at moneyradio1510.com. And James is our engineer, brought us in with some great 4th of July music, kicked it off with a little Jimi Hendrix. And then followed up by Bruce Springsteen, and we are coming at you live July 1st. We're already at the halfway mark for the calendar year 2016. Where does this time go? Happy 4th of July. And it's hard to believe I'm coming at you live, and it's like 87 degrees, cool and breezy in Phoenix, Arizona, or here in the Scottsdale Air Park, which is very unusual. We're going to take it, and we're going to accept it, and we're going to just go with the flow. So we're coming at you today from the air park, and if you've not listened to our show, our show is about how our older adult population can live a healthier, happier life. And I'm able to do this by bringing outstanding guests to the show to really talk about some of the issues, some of the challenges, and and more importantly, some of the solutions that are out there for people that are afflicted with illnesses, injuries, um, and families that have challenges that they're dealing with. So today I've got a couple repeat performers, but I'm going to introduce our guest that has not been on the show yet, and she is on today, and she's somebody that I met a couple years ago and is a good friend, uh, Suzanne Hyde. Welcome to the show, Suzanne. Thank you, Bob. Suzanne has a counseling and psychotherapy uh, business that she uh, runs, uh, and uh, we're going to talk about some of the things that you do for so many in our community. Great. And just to your right, to my left, is Rich Lasota. Rich, welcome back to the show. Glad to be here. Rich, it's really good to have you here. And uh, Rich is the Division Director of Business Development. He's a registered nurse, and he works for a little company called Life Care Centers of America. Welcome to the show. And to his right, my left, is another repeat performer. We've got Daryl Lerner in the house. Daryl Lerner is a community liaison with a really good home health care company called Assisted Home Health. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Bob. Great to be here. You know, we're, we're here at, at the halfway point of the year and, you know, in the middle of the summer, dog days of summer, even though it's really not that hot out for Arizona purposes. And, uh, you know, Suzanne, you're, uh, you're new to our show and I, I really want to share with our listening audience about what you do. And you come across a lot of things that are affecting our older adult population. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, basically what I do um, through the experience and through, you know, my professional growth is now I've centered on assisting individuals coping with chronic illness um, and their caregivers. And we know that as our aging population um, is is going to be booming here, <laughs> um, the need you know for support for those coping with chronic illness and their caregivers, couples moving forward through retirement, um, it's just going to be a huge need, and it's not going away anytime soon. Um, so just helping people uh, manage and cope with that. I mean, we're looking at probably almost what. I think the current statistics even just for cancer is one in three um, one in women three. and two in three men will be cancer survivors. And so we're looking at a large population um, outside of even cancer, MS, um, Parkinson's, 
we're just dealing with a huge segment of our population that's going to need the support moving forward, and we can't underestimate the impact that chronic illness has on the functioning of being a human being. And, you know, you, you, you talk about coping skills. Mm-hmm. And, and, and when I think about that, Suzanne, and you and I had some conversation last week, you know, it's being able to talk about it mm-hmm. because so many people feel like they're in a silo and they're all alone and nobody could ever ever understand what I'm going through. You got it. You got it. I um, have a huge kind of uh, vision that we heal in community. And just like we say about parenting, it takes a village to raise children. It takes a village to help individuals with chronic illness. And and half the time I work with individuals, all they need is the validation and normalization of their feelings. I mean, we're looking at our caregivers, especially, um, you know, just in specifically with cancer, you're looking at almost 50% of the caregiver population that will experience clinical levels of anxiety and depression related to the chronic aspect of their role. Um, they're throw, you know, they're they're just having to manage so many things in their life, and after a while, just like your arm would get tired holding out a glass. Um, our brain and our spirit gets tired after a while. And so it's so important that individuals um, try to seek out that support and reduce the isolation tendencies that come with illness. And and there are so many resources out there, including the gentleman uh, to my right and uh, Bob Yu as well as a number of community agencies that are out there to support. So just don't do it alone. Um, and, And, you know, to be able to reach out to get that support you will keep yourself healthy. I always used to say as an oncology social worker is I needed to make sure my caregivers were taking care of themselves, otherwise I would have two patients on my hands. And as a professional caregiver, all of us included here, we really don't want to see that happen where our caregiver also gets ill because of the chronic nature of their role. You know, that old adage about it takes a village. Mm-hmm. It truly does take a village. And, uh, you know, we have part of that village here today. You got it. And, you know, you know, as you mentioned, the gentleman to your right, you know, Rich, you oversee some really sophisticated long-term care facilities right here in our community and actually throughout our country, but right here in our community that have a nice footprint that are helping these families. You're helping them cope. You are helping them to get better again so that they can at least go from hospital into this post-acute skilled nursing rehab center to get to try to get back home. No, that's right, Bob. We are, um, th- obviously, the main goal is for folks who cannot make that transition from the hospital directly to home yet, we are that kind of that bridge or that conduit between the two. The whole goal is get these folks better as quickly as we can and get them back into their home environment because obviously that's the best place to heal is at home. Uh, but I- I'll tell you, I- we can't do it alone. Uh, you know, it takes partners such as assisted home health and obviously Cyprus. You know, it takes a lot of different people getting involved to make sure we have good transitions of care uh, with our patients and families. Uh, but, you know, for those who need long term services who cannot make that transition home, yes, absolutely, we're there. We have those services available, uh, but that's a that's a tough decision, and it's very hard on the family. Well, and the paradigm has changed. I mean, we've talked about it here on the show, and for our listening audience, you know, there was a time and day where you know when you could no longer care for somebody, you pretty much, and I hate to use this word, you institutionalize them, you put them into this nursing home. That and the one that I remember, the ones I remember back from the '60s and '70s, you walked into that door, and the ammonia stench that you got from the urine was was painful. I mean, it really was. And and times have changed. Those days of those traditional nursing homes are not around anymore. Oh no, those those days are done. Um, the facilities today are much more sophisticated. Um, they we've really become today what the hospitals did a few years ago. You know, so those patients are spending less and less time in the hospital. They're coming over to us to complete their, you know, their rehab and their services and then going home. So, yeah, the, if you walk into a, a skilled nursing facility or a nursing center and it smells like urine, I'm going to give you some advice. Turn around and walk out because that should not be the case at all. And, and one of the questions I have for you before we take a break, you know, Suzanne was talking about, you know, working with coping skills. I would imagine that you come across a lot of people in the long-term care setting that, are depressed, that are challenged because they're physical and emotional and mental limitations. Is that something that you guys are doing within the four walls of your 
your your communities that you have? It is. We deal with that on a daily basis. Obviously, as we were talking prior to the show, there is, for the family members, there's a lot of guilt. There's a lot of anger, especially when you have to make that decision that somebody does need to remain in a nursing center. It's, it's very difficult. It, and they want to go home. They want to go They home. really want to go home. And, and I got to tell you, that's a great segue because I want to talk to Daryl and and home health and home care are key components to being able to have that person go from that skilled setting, from that you know that that setting that you know they are, you know, having the uh, the telemetry, the striker beds, the the monitors into that home setting. We're up against a break here. You're listening to Health Futures. I'm your host Bob Roth. We got a full studio here today. We got Daryl Lerner, Rich Lasota, and Suzanne Hyde. Happy Fourth of July weekend. We will be right back. Market Wrap with Mo Ansari is your daily source for financial news and analysis. With over 30 years of trading experience, Mo shares his thoughts on the markets, answers your financial questions, and features guest experts from around the world covering a variety of investment topics. Visit MarketWrapWithMo.com for more info about the show and listen to Market Wrap with Mo Ansari. The statements and opinions you hear from the hosts or their guests on Money Radio do not necessarily reflect the views of Money Radio staff, management, or advertisers, and do not constitute an offer to buy or sell any securities. Please do your own research or consult with a professional before investing or buying any product or service. Some of the interviews and programs you hear on Money Radio are paid for by the participants. Hey everybody, Mark Asher, about to tell you about my great friend Jason Mitchell and the Jason Mitchell Group, now with My Home Group. Hey, if you're considering buying or have made the decision to buy a home, then the summer is without question the best time to purchase. Why? Well, it's pretty simple. Less competition. There's no snowbirds here. Visitors are gone. And with less buyers out there, sellers are more inclined to sell at lower pricing. This is a fact. So take this along with now record low interest rates, and now is truly the absolute best time to purchase. If you're going to do that, why not work with the most trusted name and number one sales team in the Valley, the Jason Mitchell Group. Jason and his team have sold nearly 200 homes already this year. We're only halfway through. Their systems, processes, and support are simply the best in the business. So if you want to work with the best, Get your home sold or buy a home quickly. Call 480-522-1030. That's 480-522-1030 or visit jasonsellsaz.com. LiveWatch helps you connect and respond up to 10 times faster in an emergency. LiveWatch has no long-term contracts. Save up to 50% off home security. Call 855-LIVEWATCH or visit livewatch.com. Now back to Health Futures. Taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. I'm your host, Bob Roth, and you're listening to Health Futures, Taking Stock in You. If you missed our first segment, you can catch it right up on our website at cypresshomecare.com. You can catch about 100, 120 others that we've been bringing to you for the last three years. And, James, thank you again for bringing us in with Chicago. And, and it is only the beginning. It's only the beginning because we haven't had Daryl Lerner speak yet. And Rich brought that to my attention. So, Daryl, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, Bob? I'm doing great. So we were talking about transitions and t- transitioning somebody from that post-acute center and how important it is that home health and home care work together. And, and that's something that you're not uh, a stranger to. You guys do that every single day. Home health is, uh, thank you, Bob. Home health has become a huge focus uh, now, probably more than er- ever. A couple of years ago, Medicare implemented pay for performance. So they're trying, attempting to push them out of the hospital sooner, getting them to the SNF or getting them to home and doing that transition. That transitional piece is so key. Home health is a major player in that you know the hospital could the hospital and the doctors could do a great job the sniff does a great job 
But then if you refer to a home health and the home health drops the ball, then everyone is getting penalized for that now, and, and the patient returns to the hospital. So there's a huge focus on lowering return to hospital rates. Uh, thankfully, I work for a company. We we have we do high acuity home health. We do we work with a wide range of patient, and our return to hospital rates are very very low. Um, and part of that is probably the skill set of the nurses and therapists at assisted home health. We work closely with a lot of different partners in the valley, and um, they are looking to us to ma- manage those patients, keep them out of the hospital and have good communication. That's the key, I think, to everything. All the reasons why things go wrong, it always starts with communication. So if we have good communication, we have good handoff, which is what the hospital and the skilled nursing facilities are you know, focusing on and working on on a daily basis, that's when we can have good outcomes and successful outcomes. So metrics-wise, I know there's some national metrics, and I think it's like, what, 18%, 16% readmissions? And so for home health in Arizona, the uh, Arizona average is uh, 15%. 15%. The national average is 16%. There you go. I, I knew 16 yeah. was a number. Currently, right? assisted home health is currently at 3.9%. Three, 3. Wow. Uh, yeah, I've I, I've got wow. area, and I've got areas of town like East Valley. I have my skilled nursing facilities in the East Valley. I'm currently at two percent, so we're really keeping them out of the hospital, keeping them safe. Um, wow, getting them getting them to the you know the transition, and that's what they want. They, our goal is to keep them out of the hospital and to keep them out of out of rehab. How facilities. are you doing that? I mean, seriously, I you know you've got to have a formula. It, it is the people that you have, but. What what benchmarks or what systems do you have in place to keep them from readmitting? Well, we're very lucky. The we have a there's a we have a team of um, of RN, MSN, MBAs in California in our corporate office that they part of what they do. Believe it or not, I'm not kidding you. They sit in a room and they think about you know there's there's a team of people that are thinking about how can we improve this, how can we deliver this better, how can we implement this. And um, one of the things that we do, we have what's called an enhanced home health program. Uh, it's a seven-point program. And we actually do a talking call on the first Friday and a talking call on the second Friday, the, the first two weeks the patient's on service with us. And you wouldn't believe what we catch. Uh, you know, they're discharging from the hospital. We had a lady that discharged hours before from one of the hospitals in the Valley, CHF patient, and CHF, just so everyone understands, congestive heart failure. Right. Okay. She actually had CHF and COPD. She had obstructive pulmonary disease as well. And she was supposed to discharge the hospital with oxygen. And the nurse that was doing the talking call says, oh, "Did you reviewing the chart, did you get your oxygen? She says, no. She goes, what do you mean? You're, the orders say you're supposed to discharge the hospital. You know, we're all human beings. We make mistakes. This lady happened to discharge without oxygen. We... The nurse asked, do you have oxygen right now? She goes, yeah, I have a half a tank. This is on a Friday at 4.30. So we got a nurse supervisor involved. This is a Medicare patient. So we got a nurse supervisor involved. We had DME deliver oxygen to the home within an hour of that conversation. I'm a baseball fan. That's what I call a save. Mm -hmm. So we saved her from going. That lady was going back to the hospital. Oh, no doubt. Absolutely no doubt. So, you know, that's a great example of catching simple something that slips through the cracks, catching things that you know, could be happening, double checking, just to make sure the person is safe. When they do those calls, they they make sure they have their medications, they make sure they're safe, do they have support? Because home health will see the patient during the week, then the weekend goes by, and we see the, try to see the patient again on Monday, and they're sitting in the ER. Yep. So we're, now we're being reactive instead of proactive. So the reason why assisted home health, I think, one of the reasons why we're so successful is we have all these very proactive programs that – that address the situation before it becomes a situation. If you have a situation, then you're then you're playing, then you're then you're trying to catch up. Then you're reactive, and you're now you're, you know, a, a, a cardiologist or a pulmonologist sees a patient with CHF or COPD usually after they have an acute episode. Our goal is to keep is to prevent the acute episode. So we have a cardiopulmonary, for example, one of our niches. We have a cardiopulmonary program. For we have telehealth for patients with CHF and COPD for patients at home to prevent that readmission, to prevent that patient from having an acute episode. So these people sit in a room in California and think about ways to keep people from readmitting, improving outcomes, because really that's what we're talking about. We've come to a point where fee-for-service is, is going to be a thing of the past. It is all outcome-based. 
And I want you just to explain, because you use this terminology, and I want our listening audience to, you know, because I can visualize it, tuck in. So what, is, what does that mean, the, the tuck in call or whatever? So this, it's, it's just a kind of a nickname, but it's basically what it says. We're making sure, you know, when you, those who are parents, when you tuck your children in, you know, when they go to bed. Are That's they, what I visualize. Do they I have just, everything, right, do they have everything they need? Are they safe? Are they comfortable? You know, do they have? Do they drink some? You know, whatever it is in, in a child's case, did you did you drink some water? Did you go to the bathroom? Right. So all the things that 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 somebody requires that we know that they need to have to have a successful weekend, because the weekend is when right they have the least amount. Patients have the least amount of supervision, and that's the greatest chance for something to occur. We we have we home health analyzes everything, so we have actually have statistics on what days of the week are the highest days of the week where people go back to the hospital. What the diagnosis is for why they go back to the hospital. What time of the day do we get the call? We, I mean, we have everything analyzed to such a point, and we take that data, and then we focus on the, the solution. How do we prevent that? Why is it happening at that time? Or why is it happening at that day of the week? I, I love it. And, and, you know, we have become so analytical. And, you know, you talk about that type of data, but we also have data now Home health care companies have data that relate to when someone have, has comorbidities or multiple morbidities, what the outcomes may be looking like and, and what treatment protocols may they need uh, as a result of that. So, I mean, it, it, you know, technology is really, and I've talked about it on this show, is going to propel us into the future and help us build better outcomes and deliver better care. And really, I mean, what Daryl was just sharing in terms of the the benefit to the spouse or caregiver taking that patient home, I mean, that's been one of the biggest struggles, too, that I've seen on my side of things is the caregiver or the spouse, they get discharged on a Friday. And as a social worker, then we were getting called um, because they weren't getting any oxygen. And then before you knew it, they were going to spend another five hours in the ER. So that's just amazing in terms of really impacting the level of caregiver and spousal stress upon a discharge, just to know that they have that partner again, that kind of community around them, making sure um, the patient's needs are getting met. I always said as a caregiver, when your loved one is diagnosed, you get your honorary MD degree in about six weeks. Um, you're learning language you never did. You learn terminology, doctors, roles, all that kind of stuff. And so for a home care agency like yours to really be able to partner with, with the caregiver or spouse when that patient goes home and that, that caregiver or spouse knows that they have that partner. Um, that hasn't been there, just like you were saying before. Um, love it. One of the things that Richard developed at Life Care is instead of the discharge process happening at the end, a day or two before the person leaves, mm -hmm. we get the information upon admission, you know, 72 hours after admission, for example, we meet the patient, we confirm everything, we, we talk to the family, and we start that process early so that it takes all the stress, this is what we're going to do, this is the goal, help them visualize where, you know, everything has a beginning, a middle, and an end, what direction are we going? And then again, before the patient discharges, we see them again and let them know they have the support. And that, that relaxing the, the stress, removing the stress, mm -hmm. letting them know what the next step is, that's which is the biggest, one of the biggest stressors for them, we remove that, and that helps the outcome. Can't believe it, we're up against a break. You're listening to Health Futures. We'll be right back. As we reach the bottom of the hour, we pause for a look at the world's news. Then we're back with Money Talk. We're Money Radio 1510 and 99.3 FM. Hostages are being held by gunmen in a restaurant in the diplomatic zone of Dhaka, Bangladesh, and two police officers have died. Correspondent Sanima Udas. This happened around 8.45 p.m. That's when these assailants uh, broke into that restaurant, started attacking, uh, shooting, uh, and again, an unknown number of people trapped inside, an unknown number of hostages. In the wake of the terrorist attack in Istanbul, security has been tightened at U.S. airports. And with tourists heading into Washington, D.C. for July 4th events, the nation's capital is seeing a stepped-up law enforcement presence. D.C. Police Chief Kathy Lanier. We want to make sure that officers are out in all of the neighborhoods and present to make sure that um, travelers coming into the district can get around okay and be safe. And also people in our neighborhoods have their neighborhood officers to be safe. 
On Wall Street, the Dow up 35. I'm Ann Cates. The Ford Freedom Sales Event is on. It's our biggest event of the year, giving you the freedom to save. Now get 0% Ford credit financing on a huge selection of Ford cars, trucks, and SUVs. Plus, specially tagged Ford vehicles get a 1,000 smart bonus cash. That's freedom from interest and freedom to choose from Ford Focus, Fusion, and Escape. Even Ford Edge, Explore, or the Build Ford Tough F-150. No wonder Ford is America's best-selling brand. During the Ford Freedom Sales Event, get 0% Ford credit financing on a huge selection of Ford vehicles. Plus, specially tagged vehicles get a 1,000 smart bonus cash. Not all buyers qualify for Ford credit limited term financing. Supply of vehicles with smart bonus is limited. Not available on Focus RS, Shelby GT350, Transit, Transit Connect, E-Series, F650, and F750. See dealer or go to Ford.com for qualifications and complete details. For all offers, take new retail delivery from dealer stock by 8-1-2016. Sales claim based on 2015 calendar year sales. Listening to the great news and advice from Money Radio is easier than ever with many choices. Log on to MoneyRadio1510.com to find all the options. Who do dry cleaners in the valley call when they have a stain they can't get out? Or they have a special garment that needs care that they're not trained to provide? I'm Steve Phillips, owner of Z Cleaners, and they call me. Z Cleaners has been inspected and is recognized as one of America's best cleaners every year since 2004 and is Arizona's only certified couture care specialist. We get referrals from other cleaners in the Valley almost every week because our staff is trained in the latest technology and practices in stain removal. At Z Cleaners, couture items are cleaned and processed by hand. That's an important consideration when you're looking for a dry cleaner to care for your designer clothing. Give us a call today, 602-CLEANER. That's 602-253-2637, 602-CLEANER. Or find us on the web at zcleaners.com. Remember, choose the dry cleaner other cleaners choose, and that's Z Cleaners. Mention Money 15 and get 15% off your first month's dry cleaning and laundry needs. Hi, I'm Gary Kolb. I'm host of the nationally syndicated radio show, Investor's Edge. We're not just handsome radio people. We manage investors' money for a living, specializing in fee-based discretionary money management. No big commissions, just a fee on the assets that's managed. We also provide a full range of personalized services, including retirement planning, insurance, fixed income, and educational needs, all to assist you in achieving your financial goals. Understanding not all individuals have the same needs, we will carefully evaluate your personal goals to determine a proper investment strategy. If your current approach to investing is not getting you where you would like to be, call us to make an appointment for a complimentary portfolio review. The number to call, 888-422-5559. That's 888-422-5559. That's 888-422-5559. Five 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 nine. Join Daniel Bustamante, co-founder of Landshark Analytics and LongshortRadio.com, and learn to trade from the pros. Tuesday, four thirty p.m. on the Financial Review. I'm Bruce Bale with your money now. After a year of meetings with potential customers, Boeing is advancing toward developing an all-new jetliner with up to 270 seats that would target mid-range flights of up to 10 hours. The proposed new plane would enter service around the middle of the next decade, but first, Boeing executives need to secure board approval by demonstrating it can build the plane at the price dictated by airlines and leasing companies. Just ahead of some big celebrations, Winco Fireworks is recalling about 14,000 black cat cone fountains due to a fire hazard. The company said when the cones are ignited, they may burst and shoot sparks outward instead of upward, posing fire and burn hazards. The cone-shaped fireworks were sold in packs of three at fireworks retailers nationwide. Stocks are holding on to small gains with the Dow Jones Industrial Average up 37 points. The Nasdaq Composite is ahead 23 points. That's your money now. Prices are for base buildings only and may not be available in some areas. (laughs) 
This is an alert. If your business or church is building this year, you're about to pay more than you should. This could mean thousands of dollars more for your office, retail space, church, or warehouse. So call General Steel now for the quality and the price in a pre-engineered steel building that you just can't beat. That's right. General Steel can save you thousands of dollars with a pre-engineered steel building designed for your business or church. How much can you save? How about a 50 by 100 foot building for under $35,000? So don't pay thousands more than you should without calling General Steel first. Call 866-95-STEEL today and save as much as half the cost and time of conventional construction. Don't let rising steel prices put your project in jeopardy. Call now to lock in your price for three months. Call 866-95-STEEL. That's 866-95-STEEL. Don't spend thousands more than you should. Call 866-957-8335. Now back to Health Futures, taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. I'm your host, Bob Roth, and you're listening to Health Futures, taking stock in you. If you missed... Our first two segments, you can catch them right up on our website at cypresshomecare.com. And we're now on our third segment, and I've got in the studio, i got Suzanne Hyde, i got Rich Lasota, and i got Daryl Lerner. And when we took the break off the second segment, we were talking about how it really takes a community and how each one of us is delivering a way to improve outcomes outcomes with people that have illnesses, injuries, and trying to get back to what might be their new normal or back to normal. And Daryl, you were doing a great job talking about how assisted home health has these metrics in place. They have these measurements in place and, and you are doing a wonderful job of improving those outcomes. And at the same time, you mentioned something about Rich and and Life Care Centers of America and what they're doing. And Rich, I would love for you to share with our listening audience how you guys are a little bit different. And I I had on our show back in February, I had a hospitalist on the show and he was talking about a hospital system here in town. And I won't mention names, but the case management department, the head of case management said, we just literally throw them over the wall. And he's talking about patients and hope that they don't come back. And, you know, if you wait till the end to discharge somebody, it's a lot of information and a lot of stuff all at once, and retention isn't going to be great. The other thing I want to share with our listening audience, we know statistically that 29% of our population that is 65 and older is living home alone. And we also know statistically that the number is closer to 2 in 10 65 and older have some form of dementia. Those are those are the that's what we're dealing with. That's the population base we're dealing with. So, Rich, I'm going to turn it over to you to talk about what Life Care Centers of America is doing. Well, thanks, Bob. Uh, yeah, it's very unfortunate that um, somebody would have uh, say that we just throw them over the wall because guess what's on the other side of the wall? It's it's companies like life care it's companies like assisted you know, we're on the other side of that wall catching that person as they you know in essence you know being thrown over that wall uh, we have really uh, about a year and a half or two ago we took a step back and we wanted to really take a look at why patients were having readmissions to the hospital and what could we do differently and one of the things we found too is that you know, doing the traditional discharge planning with a patient and the family, what was happening is we'd wait until the very end of the patient's stay with us, and then at the last minute we're having this fire sale where everybody's rushing around trying to get this patient ready for discharge. And that's a t- honestly, that's a terrible time to try and teach somebody about discharge planning stuff because they're not in a learning mode at the right time. They're worried now, I'm going home, who's going to provide help, what can I do for mom or dad, you know, how are we going to do this? And their ability to absorb information and process it, you know, is minimalized at that point. So what we did is we took a step back and we said, why are we not starting this process up front? So as that patient comes in, we do our initial assessment of that patient, 
find out what their needs are, find out where they think they're going at discharge. And at that point, that's when we bring in our partners like assisted in home health. They come in, meet with the family and that patient up front. We have a couple of weeks time usually in front of us before that discharge, but that's the perfect time. Everybody can now start absorbing that information, start thinking about plans. And we found too, once we get to the point of discharge, everybody's on the same page. There's that safety net on the other side that there is some help available to them they're not going and they're not going it alone um, we found that we've decreased the number of, of denials or refusals that happen because what was happening at the last second you know the poor home health company is knocking on the door and the patient doesn't want to let them in because they really don't know who that is they haven't right. had that time to establish that relationship so we have worked very hard with uh, assisted and our partners to make sure that that process is done up front the family gets the information they need early on so they can process that information and it helps them make good decisions when it comes time for that discharge. Everything's in place and the discharge is planned. We all know what's happening and it is not a fire sale at the end. Improving outcomes. We are improving outcomes. We are decreasing our return to hospital uh, percentage. You know, with assisted, we meet with them monthly. We meet as companies and we sit down together. We review data. And if a patient did have a return to hospital, we talk about it together to look at hey, was there something we missed? Was there something we could have done differently? Uh, did we miss something in the planning stage? Uh, so we are always looking for ways to improve our number. And they are. We, have, we keep statistics, and the statistics are showing that we're getting better and better and better at what we're doing. And, and you know what? I, my hat's off to Life Care Centers of America because the fact of the matter is this year is when you guys are going to be imposed with penalties for readmits. You know, hospitals have been dealing with it for the last four years. You know, this is the year 2016. And I think it begins really this month, right? After six months, they're, they're, they're measuring outcomes based on CMS data, Medicare data, for those that are coming back into the hospital for CHF, COPD, diabetes, you know, the, 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 the big five. Right. They are starting uh, in July. So we are rated uh, on the CMS website on a number of factors uh, and one of those is what they call the quality measures and there's a bunch of different metrics in there and they measure different items well they're adding like you said about they're adding some new ones starting in July and one of those is the return to hospital percentage uh, for the patients that we care for they're also looking at successful return to community um, and then the percentage of patients who have an emergency room or an emergency department visit you know after their stay uh, but who don't get admitted, but they just go to the emergency room and back out again. Right. So the numbers are out there now. Uh, anyway, you can go to Medicare.gov and you find the nursing home compare and you can just look up the nursing home or, or the skilled nursing facility you're interested in and you can find all those those results there and they compare you to the state and national averages. Uh, the numbers out there right now are what they call for a show, right? They just put the, the initial numbers out to kind of show people, you know, how this is going to work. Starting in July when the new numbers roll out, those are going to count toward our ratings and our Medicare ratings. Uh, wow. Then the next step down the road, like you said, is yes, those facilities that have excessive return to hospital rates, they will start to be penalized by Medicare, and a part of their uh, reimbursement will be withheld. Well, it's interesting, and you bring up a really good point because med medicine has changed, and you know the health, the delivery of healthcare has changed, and Life Care Centers of America realizes this, and I think many others do. There's some that are still in the dark that it is about consumer, consumerism, if you would. Consumers have choice. And, in, and back in the day, we didn't have choice. We just, we took the advice or the direction that our, our, our healthcare practitioners told us, and we took it as gospel. And we said, okay, we got to do this. We're now asking questions. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, Medicare.gov is actually an excellent website, and it does help with the caregiver guilt that can ensue when you are placing a loved one. Because nowadays, I always empower my families to say, go on Medicare.gov. The case management at the hospital is still going to give you just a random list um, if you need to consider placement um, of you know, the, the different care facilities that contract with that particular insurance. But Medicare.gov really is a powerful tool now for the consumer. And not only is it for the um, 
the skilled nursing facilities, but I do believe now that there is a way to check um, home care agencies, home health, and s home health agencies. Home health agencies yes. And so you can really, as a consumer or a loved one, even if you're a distant adult daughter or son trying to help your parents out there, go on Medicare.gov. Um, and, and it's an excellent way. You can find the ratings. You can find if, you know, ones to steer away from, I hate to say it, but it is a really consumer friendly website. Now we talked about five star ratings. Um, you have ratings, obviously, you have multiple locations. Uh, are, are you, are, have they come out yet? I mean, well, well, the ratings are out. Um, so the overall five star ratings have been out for a period of time now. So that's very easy to find. But the other ratings, as far as the return to hospital rates and the successful discharge to community rates, those are out. those are kind of interesting measures because they really rank you against your competitors. Right. right. So that's what they're they're taking a look at a, a geographic area and saying how do you stack up compared to everybody else in the community? And you know what? It's a little friendly competition way, but you know, in the end, Bob patients get better outcomes and that's what we all want for them we all want that and and we also as daryl mentioned earlier in the last segment because you know he hasn't really said a whole lot this segment but he was <laughs> he was talking about how you know the analytics we become an analytical you know country we're in analytical times and it's key to improve outcomes and there's no better way to do it than doing it through that absolutely well, we're knocking down our third segment, guys. We're having fun here in Scottsdale, Arizona, coming to you live from the Money Radio Studio. We're up against a break. You're listening to Health Futures. We'll be right back. You can now catch Secured Financial Solutions on the Money with Anil Basarani and his team every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning from 9 to 10. Secured Financial Solutions believes that an educated investor is a profitable one. So tune in and be empowered with the facts. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 a.m. right here on Money Radio 1510 a.m. and 99.3 FM. To speak with Anil and his team, call now. 800-957-5604 or visit DreamRetire.com. Hey, Money Radio listeners. Corey Scheidler here with Core Fitness AZ. Just want to share with you a new program I have. I want to get you ready for the summer, and best of all, it's free. If you go to my website, scottsdalefitnesschallenge.com, you can download seven at-home workouts. These seven workouts will allow you to work out at home with minimal equipment and get you into great shape this summer. Once again, go to scottsdalefitnesschallenge.com, download those workouts, because I genuinely want you to look better and feel better this summer. You're unique, so why is your mattress one size fits all? Because a custom mattress costs thousands, until now. Hi, I'm Christian Von Rickenbach, founder of HelixSleep.com, where you can buy a mattress online, customized for you, for hundreds of dollars instead of thousands. Go to HelixSleep.com, answer a few simple questions, and we build you the most comfortable mattress you'll ever sleep on. Shipping is free, and you have 100 nights to try it out. Go to HelixSleep.com slash try now and get $50 off your order. HelixSleep.com slash try now. Laura Bramnick is a real estate agent and a real estate attorney and a consumer advocate. If you have distressed property, a possible short sale or foreclosure, you need more than a real estate agent. You need a good attorney. You're not alone. Laura can help. For more information, visit TalkRealEstateAZ.com or call 480-624-2705. That's 480-624-2705. To talk with Laura, call 480-624-2705. Bubba Burger, official burger of the 4th of July. Now that the weather's great, it's time to get the grill sizzling. Find Bubba Burger at a retailer near you. Bubba Burger, simply the best burger. Now back to Health Futures, taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. I'm your host, Bob Roth, and you're listening to Health Futures Taking Stock. And you, we're on our fourth segment, coming at you live from the Scottsdale Air Park, 4th of July weekend. And if you missed the first three segments, you can catch them right up at our website at cypresshomecare.com. You know, Suzanne, uh, I'm going to ping back to you. And, you know, it's really, you know, 
I said at the very top of our show that it takes a community. It really takes a village and a community. And I think we have many of the disciplines represented right here in our studio, talking about long-term care, talking about home health. I haven't talked a lot about home care, and you know what? I, I talk enough about home care, but I want to talk about you know what you're doing for not only the patients, but it's about the families mm -hmm. and helping them cope with you know life-threatening and life-ending illnesses. Yes, yeah. Um, I first want to just thank Rich and um, Daryl because I, I really encourage family members to reach out to these companies, even if you just wanted to educate yourself, even if you don't have a need quite yet. I always say planning helps avoid crisis. Um, and you would be amazed by just picking up a phone and how kind individuals can be and how helpful they can be and how uh, much guidance they can provide family and caregivers. Um, in terms of you know some of the work that, that I'm involved in, I, starting with the ALS Association, which was my first um, experience with chronic illness when I came out of my master's program, that's really when I developed a passion for the impact health and illness can have on the family members and the caregivers. Um, and so through the years, even at the Cancer Center, um, what we're seeing with chronic illness and cancer is turning into a chronic illness as well is it's such a roller coaster ride, not only for the patient, but for the family. And what we're also seeing with the family is not only are the spouses or loved ones um, providing that physical care perhaps, but a lot of times it's the emotional, it's the practical care, it's, it's, those are the issues like finances that are keeping our caregivers up at night because they don't want to bother their loved one who's going through the illness. And so it's really important to, um, as caregivers, and again, I've always had you know people say, well, I'm not a caregiver. I don't help someone go to the bathroom. That's not <laughs> what caregiving is anymore. Um, it doesn't have to be that anymore. A lot of times it can be emotional. Um, it can be the social. It can be really the practical, managing the calls to the insurance companies and um, Again, making sure you know the wheels of the house and life in general keep rolling while illness has come in into that family's life, and so the caregiver again has many, many more hats um, that they're needing to take on. And so, just reaching out for that support. A couple of things that I'm involved in besides my private practice is um, working with the Arizona Myeloma Network. We've developed a cancer caregiver program and curriculum. We offer free programs throughout the year that help educate and bring together caregivers around the topic of caregiving. So it can be anything from how to communicate more effectively with the medical team um, to just self-care. Um, and then I have this unique need up in the Cave Creek Care Free area, which is neighbors in need. And so a lot of times I'm a community social worker up there, free of charge for the community members to use. And I can assist um, working, partnering with Foothills Caring Corps perhaps. Um, up there as well to, to help people ease that transition back home and partnering with um, uh, companies like Rich's or um, Daryl's in terms of making that transition home more successful. So You, you know, and you, you mentioned a couple really key not-for-profit organizations mm -hmm. that you're associated with, and we have them all throughout the Valley. And for us, it's really important for listeners that are listening in right now, you're not alone. You are not alone. You know, People like Suzanne Hyde, and I, I want to give them your website just so they know they can reach out to you. It's Suzanne Hyde, and that's H-Y-D-E, counseling.com, where you can reach her at 602-316-4409. And Suzanne will tell you it's not just her. There are others that are out there. Yeah. Just you know, reach out, and you can talk to long-term care companies like Life Care Centers of America or Assisted and Daryl Lerner or you know, Bob Roth. I mean... We all know where the resources are because we're in we're part of that village. Mm -hmm. But you know, so many people are listening in right now and you might know somebody that is suffering or you may be directly doing that care. There is help out there. Yeah, and, and locally, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to the local senior centers. Uh, our local senior centers usually house um, social workers that are very familiar res with resources. And then if you're dealing with a specific diagnosis or a disease, there are some wonderful websites um, pro out there and they have, you know, free guidance for patients and for caregivers as well. So there is resources and help out there. You just have to go ahead and pick up the phone. Just pick up the phone and we're there to help. Mm -hmm. 
You know, it's hard to believe we're in our fourth segment right now, and we're kind of winding things down. And I want to just, you know, leave some closing remarks for our listening audience. Uh, you know, it's not every day that I've get, you know, four various disciplines in the healthcare sector assisting our our our, our community in helping them through this journey of life that we deal with every day. But, uh, you know, Daryl, I'm going to ping it back to you. I only have a, you know, a minute. So, <laughs> you know, d- you know, what, what kind of <laughs> everyone's laughing here because Daryl, Daryl can talk, but, <laughs> but if you wouldn't mind, just, you know, just, you know, share a parting, a, a parting comment for our listening audience and what they should be considering or thinking about. Well, the, you know, I, I meet people on a daily basis, uh, and a weekly basis. Um, in various ranges of of disease and d- the disease process, I see people with, you know, that have made choices to have joint replacement, all the way up to people that are possibly hospice appropriate, um, maybe right before actively dying. So there's a very wide range of people that I see, and the most important thing, uh, I think, the message, one of the biggest messages I like to tell people, is that there is always hope. There is always a solution. You just have to find the solution. And one one of the ways to find that solution is to find the resources. So there's a solution to every problem. You just have to find that solution. And I'm an advocate. I'm a huge patient advocate. All the people I'm sitting with here in the studio today are patient advocates. And help is available. Ask for help. There are resources available. Um, the, The more informed decisions you make, the better the outcome. Great nugget there. How about you, Rich? Any parting comments? Uh, yeah, I, I just I am just blown away sitting here next to these folks here who are just doing tremendous work with the patients out in the community. And yet, and I'm going to echo what Daryl said. There is hope. You know, it, there are people who care and deeply care about you and what you're going through, and they are there to help you. Uh, it just takes opening up our ears and opening up our minds to listen, and we will help you find solutions. And it's for them to take that first step. And ask for help because, as Suzanne knows, you know many of the people we care for are from this greatest generation, and they took the the oath literally when they got married in sickness and health, and they don't want to ask for help. No. All right, so we got Independence Day coming up. Uh, you know, I just want to just state a very fact that the noun of independence is the fact of state or being independent, freedom from control or influence, support, aid, or the like. Um, you know. We have a lot of freedoms here in this country, and you know we're very blessed to live in the greatest country in the world, the greatest country this world has ever seen. Uh, anything special you're doing this weekend? Just spending time with my pets and my family. How about you, Rich? You know, I'm hanging out with my family, but I'll tell you, Bob, I, we can't thank enough the people who have given their lives so that yes. we can live the lifestyle we are living today. Yes. All right, couldn't agree with you more. Parting comment, you got about five seconds. I'm just swimming with the family, having a barbecue, and remembering the people that have helped us. Have a great weekend. Happy Fourth of July. Yeah. Be safe. There's no place like home. You've been listening to Bob Roth's Health Futures. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, Call Cypress Home Care Solutions at 602-264-8009. That's 602-264-8009. Or visit cypresshomecare.com. Be sure to join Health Futures with Bob Roth every Friday at noon, right here on Money Radio 1510 and 99.3 FM. Don't miss a minute of Market Wrap with Mo Ansari, the daily show that brings you the latest financial news, expert guests from around the world, and answers to your financial questions. If you missed the show on the radio, get the Market Wrap app and listen at your convenience. Just dial pound 250 on your cell phone and use the keyword talk to Mo. Once you have the Market Wrap app, the show will download automatically to your smartphone every day. So dial pound 250 on your cell phone and use the keyword talk to Mo to get the Market Wrap app. Money Radio 1510 and 99.3 FM is KFNN Mesa Phoenix and K257CD Phoenix. Auctions are fun to attend, but now make them work for you. Listen to the auction block.